So here's exactly what it takes to win in SMMA, and this is going to be the price of your success. And disclaimer, you might not like what I say in this video, because if what I say makes you uncomfortable, you don't have to agree with me at all right now. All I ask is that you take time to think about what I've said, and without further ado, let's dive into it. So I started self-improvement around one year ago. I watched Thomas, I watched Iman Gaji, I watched everyone that you probably watch right now. I journaled, I meditated, I worked out, and I managed to hit a 90-day streak of all my habits, which put me over the moon. It was great. I felt great. But deep down, this really wasn't what I wanted at all. I was after freedom. That's what I wanted. I wanted financial freedom. I wanted to make 10K a month. I wanted to flex on the brokers. I want to do all that. So I started on my business. This business was SMMA. But I didn't know what I didn't know is that I was going to be battered by the world of business. And it sucked a lot. I got beat up by a business. And there were times where I wanted to quit badly. I mean, times where I cried, but I wanted to just stick it through. I made it through and not on the other end. And doing that, I bared fruits and I bared knowledge. And all these nuggets are going to be from my personal pitfalls, of things that I messed up on, so you don't have to make the same mistake as me. So if it relates to you, it means that you and I were in an eerily similar position. And today I'll deliver what I exactly I learned. So that if you relate to any of this, chances are you and I were in the same position. And if I'm any bit ahead of you right now, this could probably help you out a lot. You don't need to use this information, but understand I'm not speaking generally. Da da da. What I just said. Pitfall number one is fear. So fear is one of the best ways to keep you stagnant. And if you're in a moving market, so a market that's getting more complex, growing, standing still means that you are declining. And I have fears in business to this very day. There's things that I'm scared of right now, but there are what's called false fears. Going to the dentist was a false fear of mine. Always as a kid, I used to be scared and cry every time my mom wanted to take me to the dentist, but then I'd be fine afterwards. And this carried over in SMA. I might not have cried, but I sure did want to at some point in time. And fear number one was my age and my situation. So I was 15 when I started my business, which is pretty young. And I was always scared of saying my age. I got scared of telling my story. I got, you know, scared of cooped up. I was a video gamer and I just didn't want to tell people that. And I tried being professional and that fell and allowed me to fall on my face. On my first sales call, a prospect laughed at me, right? And the prospect laughed at me, but then he actually told me what the answer was. And it was authenticity. This might seem like bullshit to you, but your age is actually an advantage. And I don't mean that in a, you're going to be a killer when you're 20 type of way. I mean that in a, you can be a killer right now type of way. And if there's one thing humans, regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, whatever it might be, respect, it's hustle, right? And I started telling people that I was 50 and I started telling people I didn't want to go to college. I started telling people my true intentions of starting a business and it opened doors and it moved mountains for me. And it's done the same for Gershon, who is 15 and makes 5K a month. I interviewed him on my channel. And Muhammad, who was in the first client challenge and landed his first client at the age of 13. The list goes on, but if you don't want to believe me on this one, it's whatever. Fear number two. Failure. This fear was cured with a one-liner for me. And it was a one-liner from an entrepreneur making a lot, a lot of money that I got the opportunity to speak with. Yeah, over eight figures. And here it is. So the best time to fail is right now. We live in a present or we live in the present and the repercussions will only get worse as time goes on. Let me repeat that. So the best time to fail is now. We live in the present and the repercussions will only get worse as time goes on. So we can't go in the past. It's not back to the future. And the future, you know, we'll never really actually see. It will only get better. Like we're only going to get better and better and better and better in the future, especially if you're watching this video. So the present right now, as you're listening to me, is the best time to just absolutely screw up, fall on your face, do all these things. Because in the present, or sorry, in the future, things are going to get worse, right? You're going to get higher and higher and higher and higher. And you're going to have more responsibility and a bigger repercussion for actually failing. So just mess up right now. It's the best time to do it. There's no debating that. Fear number three, LLC and taxes. So I got really scared about this one, but it's just not important right now. Deal with it when you get a client. Fear number four, expertise. So Facebook ads have what I like to call a high barrier of mental entry and just business in general. So at first I avoided them as much as possible because I was just scared of, you know, actually running them what would happen on the other end. But on one Sunday morning, I was pretty well forced to actually get my knowledge of Facebook ads up. And I hopped on with the intent to actually learn. And two hours later, I could run Facebook ads and the mental dragon had been slain. This experience is mutual across RSC, the first client challenge, and most lead gen agency owners that I've ever met. Let me show you a little bit about what I mean. So over here, and this will be later in the video, but right now what Facebook ads look like is a high mental barrier. So we are right here on this platform, and what we have is a very big barrier. And what we think we have to do is you have to climb this barrier, and then after this barrier, we climb it, there's going to be another barrier after that. And that's how Facebook ads going to work. You have to keep going up and up and up. And that's just a complete lie, right? Really what it looks like is there is this mental barrier. You climb up, 
da, da, da. we get ready to keep going back up. So we go like this and then we fall down because we realize that Facebook ads were extremely simple all along. They're either, you know, at the exact same level or maybe a little bit higher, but it's nothing absolutely big at all. And this experience was mutual across almost all the people that I had met. I understand fully though, if that didn't convince you at all, because you can decide how much you want to trust me for this one. Fear number four is the word no and hate. So this was the only one that actually doesn't go away after time. You just get stronger and you grow used to it. And doing outreach is all about no's. Right there, the integral part of actually seeing a yes, something I always say, right? The more no's you can run into, the closer you are to a yes. It's the same thing with hate. The more videos I make, the better I get at my craft and the more people I help, the more people are gonna hate me. It doesn't mean to you know stop the hate because those people that hate me just really aren't of the same mindset. And the better stuff I do, the more people I help, the more people that see it, the more people are going to hate, right? I don't love the haters. I don't, you know, I don't subscribe to all the love your haters type of stuff. I don't love them, but I understand them. Even if it's my friend and family, I understand that those are not personal attacks. It's simply the situation that they're going through and see it this way. And it won't affect your business, your personal life, or your conscience at all, because it's inevitable, right? As you help more people and you're exposed to more people, there's going to be people that don't agree with you. And how they want to reflect that is whatever. Don't worry about it. Pitfall number two, sacrifice. So after fear is sacrifice. And homeostasis is a very, very, very interesting word for me. I wish I would have paid attention in school because I would have known a lot more about it and saved myself a lot of time in business. So this was taught to me by Charlie Morgan. And Charlie Morgan learned it from a man named Sam Ovens, who's extremely smart. And homeostasis is the process of the body balancing it out through body temperature, energy, whatever it might be. And if it goes up, it must come down to its equilibrium. But why is this important at all? Because I was in what's called a weekend warrior. And a weekend warrior is someone who goes up for three days and then goes down for three days. And I did this for weeks and weeks and months eventually on end. And it's the concept of going hard, da da da, and coming back down. It's homeostasis, right? I would send 300 outreaches in two days. I'd work out, I'd clean my room, I'd meditate, I'd journal, I'd read, I'd do no social media, I'd do it all. And on the third day, I had my belly out. I was eating Cheerios, scrolling on social media by 3 p.m. And it kept happening over and over and over and over again. I thought it was just me. I thought it was the cursed disciple of discipline, that I couldn't be disciplined, and that everyone else had something that I didn't have. And that was just a big, big, fat lie. Because I didn't understand disciplinary homeostasis. And that is that you have a certain amount of willpower that you can do, like a like certain amount of willpower that you can put out on any one given day. If you overspend in one day, it cuts into the next day's supply, therefore leaving you down bad. Let me show you a little bit about what I mean. So on any given day, here's what we look like. So we got our power cell, our battery. This is what we wake up with in the morning. It's our energy that brings us through the day. Let me show you a little bit about what it looks like. And I just made the whole page green. This was not connected. Uh, just Cool. So this is what it looks like on any given day. And let me show you a little bit more about how it's cut up. So we've got, let's say five batteries, right? We got one, two, three, four, five, boom. So this is how much batteries we have in a day. And what a lot of people will try and do, what I was doing is I would try and have a routine and the routine, the cost would be six batteries. So I know you're a pretty intelligent individual. So if you have five batteries and you spend six batteries, it means that the day after you're only gonna have four batteries in your tank. And your tanks get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's what happens with the weekend warrior. A lot of people will have five batteries and go after routines that have 10 batteries. The next day they got zero batteries and they can't get out of bed and they can't do anything at all. And what's good about this is that eventually you can do a routine that has, let's say 20 batteries, but the way it actually do this is just habits, right? You have to build strong habits that actually benefit and stop making the take up batteries. So let's say we have a morning routine over here. So morning right here takes up two batteries. That's all it takes up right now. So a big part of our day is actually spent on the morning routine. But over time, well, let's say over a month, we do this exact morning routine for a day. This goes from, you know, one battery or two batteries over here to just one battery. So we no longer have it circled out here. Morning routine is now only one battery. So that means that we've got an extra battery. And as we keep on stacking our habits, 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 and things require less energy of us, we can get to morning routines that ask us of 20 batteries, but it doesn't feel that way because all the good things that we do are just built up as habits. I'm not saying you need to become the habit man because I disagree completely with doing that, but understand that you only have a certain amount that you can exude in a current day. And if you're running into a situation where you don't feel disciplined, but 
you know, you're the super good person, you're super motivated. It's not because of you not being motivated, it's you not not being disciplined, because I hear that a lot. It is just that you spent too many of your batteries. And the best way to preserve your batteries is to plan in downtime because you can recharge your batteries on any given day. Something that I started doing is I would pick out, you know, in the late afternoon, evening, I would pick out two hours of my day to just watch a movie. And after watching my movie, I would, you know, not try my very best to not think about business. I would immerse myself in the world of the movie. And by doing that, I would be way more disciplined during the day. But when I didn't do that, I would try and work in the evening. I tried and put in some extra outreach. And then the day after I'd wake up with Tootsie Roll and Instagram scrolling. And exactly like it would happen over and over and over again. I just didn't understand this. As you get better and better, you can build in, you can either build through habits, right? Making your morning routine take less and less and less and less. Things in your day taking less, 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 less time of you. Or you can just plan in time to recharge. So you can be making eight figures on five batteries. Or, you know, you could be making seven figures on 20 batteries. It doesn't matter. However you want to do it, it's still possible. But the biggest thing is understanding that you are a human being and you have to play with your system. You look at your body as a robot and not this thing that you don't understand because it's very simple. So that being said, I hope that the time I stole from you actually was worth the amount of value that I provided and I hope you have a rest of your day.